In this tutorial we're going to be looking at two of the 3D Modify uh, tools, um, 3D Move and 3D Rotate. Let's start with 3D Move. On the Modify panel of the uh, Ribbon Home tab, uh, when we're working in the 3D Modeling workspace, we have 3D Move and 3D Rotate there. 3D Move works like this. Click to start 3D Move, select any object, right click to complete the selection, and we see the by now familiar gizmo. Uh, this is the Move gizmo, and uh, we can move, we can constrain movement in any one of three directions or three planes. If I hover my cursor over the green Y direction bar, when it turns yellow, I can click, and if I do that, I'm constraining my movement only in that direction. If I escape now to stop that, I can demonstrate that by hovering over the X bar, same is true. I can constrain movement in the X direction. Escape. And finally, this is the 3D bit, because clearly the other two things we can do with the ordinary 2D move tool, I can also move in the Z direction. Clicking on the blue Z direction bar allows me to constrain movement in that one Z direction, like so. If I just undo to go back. The 3D Move tool, though, also allows us to constrain movement in one of three planes. You'll see that between each of the pairs of axial bars here, there's a little icon which is a square sitting at the uh, origin of those bars. And I can move around and with a little bit of wiggling about I can get the icon, or the gizmo rather, to constrain movement in any one of those three planes. So for example if I select the XY plane you'll see both X and Y bars are highlighted in yellow. Click when that happens. Now I can move anywhere in the XY plane like so. So 3D Move is uh, very useful because uh, more than anything else it allows us to move in the Z direction which we can't easily do with the ordinary 2D Move tool without using coordinates. And of course in addition to just picking points I can enter a value if I want to move up uh, say 100 I can enter 100 at the keyboard here and we now know that that pyramid is sitting exactly 100 drawing units above the ground plane. 3D Rotate is a great time saver because it allows us to rotate ob objects in 3D without having to set up any special user coordinate systems. Uh, it works like this. If we go to the Modify panel on the uh, Home tab, click on 3D Rotate and select an object. Right click to complete the selection. Initially we see the rotate gizmo in the center of the object, but clearly with a, a rotation like this we want to be able to set a base point. So for example I want to rotate this box about the front edge here. Well I need to make sure that my the center of my rotation is either at the end point or midpoint of that box. It doesn't really matter which of those it is. I'm going to click on the midpoint like that. You'll see the gizmo shift to the new base point. And now I can select the axis about which we want to rotate. And uh, you'll notice that the Rotate Gizmo has three rings, one for each uh, axis. The Z one you can see is highlighted highlight at the moment, and the X axis. Now you can see the X axis here runs along the front edge of that box. That's the one we want in this case. So I'm going to click on that to confirm. And now I'm going to set a base angle and uh, I'm going to click on there like that. And you can see that I can tip this box up just like that. And uh, if I just click a point here, that box has now been rotated about its front edge. So the front edge is still on the ground plane and we've rotated it up into. Uh, 3D space, like so. Now we can have quite a lot of control over the angle that we uh, rotate in. Uh, 
And the easiest way to do that is by using the Polar Tracking tool. By default, Polar Tracking, if I right click on it, has an increment of 90 degrees. But if I wanted to rotate something by, say, 30 degrees, I could always set the increment to 30. Start 3D Rotate again. This time I'm going to select the Taurus object here. Right click to complete the selection. Uh, base point in the center is fine for me. And I'm going to this time choose the Y axis to rotate about. Click that. And you should see that starting at zero, I can come up and snap into 30 degrees. and 60 degrees and 90 degrees and beyond 90 of course to 120 and so on at 30 degree increments. So I can use the combination of polar tracking with the 3D rotate tool to create some very accurate rotations and uh, if we just have a look quickly around the scene you can see the effect of that.